Hi there terrain owners, today in your 2013 GMC Terrain, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System. Quick brief overview of all the components we've got here, because there are five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motorhome and your vehicle. Your safety cables, which is a supplementary connection in addition to your tow bar. Your base plate, which is the connection on your vehicle for your tow bar and safety cables to attach to. Your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals from your motor home and transfers them to the lights at the back of your vehicle so people know your intentions when going down the road. And lastly, your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motor home to help you have a nice smooth braking operation. Roadmaster's Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System will apply the brakes in our vehicle when we press them in our motor home. And the Invisibrake system is a permanently installed braking system. So once we install it here on the vehicle, it's going to be integrated into it. It's going to be hidden inside the vehicle. So we really don't even know that it's there. And we've got our connection here at the front that we simply just have to plug into to make the everything work. It's one of the one. It's a very easy way to get your vehicle behind your motor home every time you want to hook up. There is a bit of a large initial install compared to like a portable style braking system like Blue Ox's Patriot. With those, there's almost no setup. You just gotta hook up a breakaway switch at the front for the Patriot. So it's really easy with those portable ones. But every time you want a flat toe, you gotta set that thing in there. You gotta adjust it on the pedal and get it all set up. That's a lot of, it's a big time waste over a long period of time. We can spend a little bit more time here up front getting a permanently installed system like this on, and then we're gonna save a ton of time hooking up every time we want a flat tow, because it's, again, it's just plugging it in and we're on our way. This system uses the lighting signals from our motor home, so when it gets a brake input, it then can apply the brake, and we can adjust the brake pressure on the unit. There's a cylinder that applies the pedal, and it uses a pulley to pull our pedal. Let's go ahead and take a, a look inside so we can see that because there's a lot of braking systems that use a similar setup, but this one is the most streamlined as far as how well it's integrated in the vehicle and you don't even notice that it's there. So if we take a look here at our pedal, this is the clamp that clamps around our pedal that will pull it towards the firewall once it's activated. It does that using a cylinder. The cylinder is hidden behind a panel located over here and it has a cable that's run under the carpet that goes to a pulley. The pulley is located here. We can kind of see it right there. And when the cable pulls, it uses the pulley to give us a nice straight pull on our pedal to pull it towards the firewall. Some of the other permanently installed systems like Demco's Air Force One or Stay and Play Duo mount the cylinder directly onto the pedal, uh, onto the arm here, and it works great but that cylinder is pretty large and somebody like me who's got larger feet and stuff, it can be kind of a nuisance because your foot might touch the pedal. It, just, it doesn't feel quite as natural as the Invisibrake does because we don't have that big old cylinder here. We've remotely mounted it. Now it does mean it's a little bit more work to get this one installed versus the other ones. It is gonna take you a little bit more time, but the results are definitely worth it. We can go ahead and pull the breakaway switch pin and that'll activate it. It'll also activate on uh, brake input activation from our motorhome. I'm gonna pull the pin now so you can see it activate. So here we are inside the cab of our motorhome. You do also get a monitor light that goes in your motorhome and all the necessary wiring to install this here. There's a supplemental cable that comes with your Invisibrake system that you'll plug in in addition to your typical like six to seven way cable. Uh, it's just a single bullet connector on each end style cable that will power our monitor light. This hooks into the brake light switch on the vehicle. On our terrain, we had to install a stoplight switch because the factory one is a position sensor, so it doesn't, it's not just on and off, it won't light our light. You can get that here at eTrailer though, we're gonna cover how to install that as well. I'm gonna hit the brakes here, and when this illuminates, that means our system has activated and it's actually pulling the brake pedal because it will only light this light if the pedal actually moves, which triggers the stoplight switch. There's a plunger on there that would extend and it would turn this on. So we can see here that when I press the pedal here on our motor home, it's gonna activate the light here. And now we know for sure that our braking system has activated and not only has it activated, we know for sure that the pedal has actually moved because we're getting that real time feedback from the stoplight switch. It's also nice 
to verify when you release the brakes that they turn off. This is really useful when you're going cruising down the highway. Maybe you tap your brakes real fast to turn off cruise control. And if this light stays illuminated, uh, you know, hey, you're dragging your brakes back there. You need to pull over and figure out what's going on. And the Invisibrake taps into the tail lights as well on our motorhome and it uses that tail light circuit to trickle charge the battery when we're flat towing. So all we have to do is turn our running lights on on our motorhome here and we are now trickle charging the battery. So over a long uh, drive, maybe we're driving for six to eight hours. In that course of that six to eight hours, depending on your vehicle um, in flat tow uh, mode for your vehicle, you may or may not be draining the battery because sometimes the key needs to be on for certain vehicles. Uh, you're also going to drain the battery regardless of what vehicle you have because of your supplemental braking system. That's going to dr drain some juice out of it. So the integrated charge line kit here uh, that's part of that uh, braking system minimizes the risk of having a dead battery, um, especially if you're pulling your vehicle down the road. If the battery goes dead, your braking system that you have on there is not going to work and stuff. So it keeps you safe and it also ensures that when you get to your destination, you're going to be able to hop in, fire it up, and not have to drive this motorhome to pick up your uh, local supplies. So now that we've covered some of the features of the Invisibrake system, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. We'll begin our installation by mounting all of our major components. So we're here at the back of the vehicle. We've got the lift gate open and we pulled out the floor cover here. It's just a little panel that lifts up your spare tires underneath of it. We did move the spare tire out of the way just to make it easier to work with. Uh, it's just a, a single bolt here that comes out to pull that spare tire out of there. Once you get that out of there, we mounted it in the corner over here. So we did cut out some of this insulation here to allow our unit to sit right down in here. And there's actually a stud from the factory located right down here. So we can use that stud and nut here to secure it right down to the floor. We have it loose though, so that way we can pull it out so you can see the back side of it here because this unit does have several connections here on the back. You'll have two different wiring harnesses. You'll have a port here that allows you to slide a hose on for your quarter inch airline. And you'll also have a port for your smaller uh, airline tube. All of these hoses and wires that come out of the unit here, if we plug these in, we route those up towards the front of the vehicle. And we go along the seat there and we actually poke behind this paneling uh, after we do so. We're now on the second row of seats. So just forward from our compartment here, our wires passed next to the seat underneath the paneling here. And you can see where they run under the paneling there. We just, just pulls right up out of there. And then we continued running all those same wires forward through this piece that just pulls straight out and you can push those through and then just kind of snap that back into place. Our wires then continued to pass forward to the front of the vehicle here. The paneling here just pulls out of here as well. You just pull it up and then you'll snap it loose up here outward. You can pull that out. And all of our wires are right here, still running underneath those panels. From here, the both of the harnesses, as well as the quarter inch airline tube, we route through a grommet here in the floor and then route to the engine compartment. The smaller airline that poked into the quick connect fitting back there, that actually attaches to the cylinder. We mounted our cylinder here on the inside. It's actually mounted right here. We just zip tied it into place right alongside our uh, factory wiring harness up here behind the kind of behind the paneling here. There's our cylinder right there. Again, we just zip tied it to that harness there. This is the cable that comes out of the cylinder here. And the airline connection is actually right here. You can see the airline, it just pokes right in here into that quick connect. We just kind of turn it towards the side there just to make it a little more low profile. The cable that's coming off of our cylinder here just kind of does a big loop under the carpet there. And it comes back up here. This is where we've got it mounted to the floor. That's on the sheathing. There's just a little bracket that goes over the sheathing and you use a couple self-tapping screws to mount that up there. The rest of the cable here where it's bare, where it comes out of the sheathing, will go up to our pulley. We mounted the pulley just kind of directly behind the brake pedal where the arm for the brake pedal is, not the actual uh, pad portion, but the vertical arm. The cable then attaches to a clamp that we put around the the pedal here. And we just use the bolts 
and nuts that come in the kit to slide through the spaces to clamp that around the pedal. The end of the cable here has two nuts on it. Those are your adjustment nuts for adjusting the tension, whether you want to bring it a little bit closer or a little bit further away. To slide it into the bracket, you have to loosen the nut that's closest to the cable end all the way off. That'll allow you to take the cable and kind of slip it over this, slide it into the hole, and then you can slide that nut back up and reinstall it to tighten that back down. We can then adjust our cable. We do want a little bit of slack in here because we don't want to have any pressure that's pulling on our pedal. Uh, so you just leave yourself just a little bit of slack. There's not a ton here. You can feel that it gets fairly taut, fairly fast, but it is uh, not keeping any pressure on the pedal. Now there is an additional component that we installed with this system uh, to make everything work properly, and that's a stoplight switch. We're using one from Roadmaster. I figured we'd talk about that right now because it all installs in this same area right here. So this paneling right here, uh, we're going to take this off. There's three screws that run across the bottom. We use our seven millimeter to take those out, and then we can actually just pull this panel off. I've already got it kind of loose there, uh, but it just it just snaps out of here. There we go. And once we get this out of the way, there's actually another metal panel here that's behind it. Just take those four screws out, and then you can set that aside. That's uh, that's this panel here. After you remove those pieces, that'll reveal the area where we're going to mount our stoplight switch. The stoplight switch is located right here. You can straight through that opening, you can see the stoplight switch. It attaches to the bracket that comes included with the stoplight switch. There's a single bolt that's right there at the top of the attachment point where it's mounting our pedal arm here. We'll remove that one bolt with a 13 millimeter socket, slide our bracket on there and reinstall the bolt. After I did that, I did have to bend the bracket around just a little bit to make it line up properly. Uh, you could probably twist it or bend it um, as necessary to get it to where the switch here, the end of the plunger on the switch, touches the shaft arm. Then use the two nuts that's on the switch and tighten those down in a position that has the plunger depressed in. That way when the brake pedal is pressed, the plunger will extend, activating the switch. So after you got those tightened down, we can wire it up. There are two circuits coming out of the back here, two wires out the back. Both of them are black. You can hook any one you want to the other. There's no polarity for it. One of these wires will need a power source. And that's what this red wire is right here. Uh, so we just used some of the red wire that came with our stoplight switch and attached it to that. We routed it down and over towards that grommet on the floor. The other wire here needs to attach to the monitor light circuit that comes in your kit. And this is a big bundle of black wire and then on the end it's gonna have a, a female bullet connector. The bullet connector, it will be at the front of the vehicle uh, and it'll be routed inside and connected to here. You can actually connect it here and we can route it right out that grommet and move towards the front. So you can make those connections now as well. So still on the stoplight switch, that red wire that runs down towards our grommet, that's right here. We actually took that over to the red wire coming off of the braking system harness. So you get those two harnesses. Uh, one of the harness is just your uh, diode lighting um, wiring harness that you'll tap into your diode lights. And then the other harness has your breakaway switch, which is the black kind of sheathed wire. And then the black and red wire here that's on that second harness as well with the breakaway switch. The black and red wire are your power and your ground. So we separated out the red wire from the black here. And then we cut the red wire, added our red wire for our stoplight switch to it, and crimped them back together. That way we'll get our power from our braking system for our stoplight switch right here. We're now outside the vehicle in the engine compartment. Uh, all those wires that pass through the grommet that went outside the vehicle, they come up here. We just push, pushed them right up. There should be enough room for you to stick your arm down in there to, to kind of feed everything and reach to push everything up. I started down below and I grabbed the wires where they came out the grommet. I pushed them kind of halfway up and then I came up here and I just reached down and grabbed them to be able to get to the rest. There's quite a bit of room in here for, uh, for your arms and stuff to, to get in there. So that's pretty much all this stuff here. Uh, there's the breakaway switch um, portion of the one harness. Here's the black and red wire. And then this is our diode wire 
uh, right here as well. And then the reason why you're seeing kind of a double is because these the diode wire that I'm referring to that goes to our braking system taps into the diode wires for your lighting system uh, for your flat toe setups. And you can see here that when you're making these connections, we're just doing color for color. So your green wire on your diode kit, you're just going to cut it, take the green wire that we routed from our brake controller or from our braking system in there. We're just going to trim it to length, twist it together with one side of the wire, crimp it on, and then crimp it back together to complete that diode circuit. So that way, whenever we get diode lighting activation from our motorhome for our vehicle, the braking system knows what's going on there. We're going to do the same thing for the yellow, the brown, and the white here to get uh, all those connected up to our diode circuits. So next we'll hook up our power and our ground circuits. These actually just run right around the fuse box. I kind of left some slack here. I always like to leave a little slack when you're kind of working around the fuse box area because if you mount something to this fuse box cover, uh, you're going to want to be able to access your fuses at a later point. So you want to leave enough slack in the wires to where you can pull the cover top off. So it wraps around right here, black and red. We do split the black and the red from one another. Just kind of cut in between them and then you can pull the two wires apart. The red wire we attach to the fuse harness that comes in our kit. And the other end gets a ring terminal and we attach to the uh, battery positive stud. Uh, that's located here. If we pull our fuse cover off, it's a little tight with all these components there. You can see here's the stud here. You just use a 10 millimeter socket to remove that. Uh, this whole portion is kind of like a stud nut. And there's a stud under it and you can slide your ring terminal on there and tighten it back down. The ground circuit just runs a row over to the other side of our fuse box. And then our black wire here, it just continues going around the fuse box. And then we'll attach it to a ring terminal and then put it on the ground stud located over here. Now we got both our power and ground hooked up. So we still got two circuits left. We've got our breakaway switch and then we have that monitor light circuit. Both of those are going to continue going towards the front. We just kind of run these up. We're actually just following the diode wiring because that's also routed towards the front. Uh, once we get up here to this point, there's a wire harness there. We zip tie to that factory harness to keep our wires up. From there, our wire just routes next to the radiator here. We go up through an opening and route it over towards our six pole connector here. The, there's our monitor light wire. The breakaway switch we mounted here. It actually mounted to a bracket that was part of our base plate. Uh, we just used the hardware that came with uh, the base plate to mount that up. And then that breakaway switch wire, it just plugs into this switch. So you just take the end of it and just plug it in. We're now back up here where all of our wires routed uh, into the engine compartment. We also had routed our airline hose. This is the quarter inch airline that is coming from our braking system inside. This needs to tap into the vacuum booster for our vehicle to ensure that when the system operates, we have powered assist, powered brake assist. So we kind of just run up here and then it curves down and it's kind of hard to see. It's back behind the engine here. If you look here where this connector is right here, this is the uh, um, pressure sensor for the vacuum booster that tells it whether or not it has a less than atmospheric pressure or not. And on the bottom of this sensor, there's a, a hose coming out of it right here. That hose is our vacuum line that we need to tap into. So what we actually did is about maybe three inches down, we cut the hose there. We slid in a T fitting that comes in our kit and then just reattach the two pieces of hose back together with the T fitting. We then did go a little bit further down the hose past our T-fitting and we cut it again one more time. There we took a check valve that comes in our kit and we put it in between the two pieces of hose and pushed those pieces of hose back together as well. You will get two check valves with your kit. You're going to get a smaller and a larger size. We need the larger size because of the diameter of the hose that we're working with here. The larger one is a kind of a creamish white color and it has a red stripe on one side. The red stripe needs to face towards the engine side. The uh, other, the blank, the cream colored, whatever side uh, is going to be the one going back towards our booster. So just make sure you got that in the uh, appropriate orientation. 
And at this point, we've got all the components hooked up here on our vehicle side. Um, if you haven't inserted your fuse yet into your fuse harness, you can insert that in there and that's gonna finish up this side. If you wanted to test it, you could pull the breakaway switch pin that should activate the system. From here, we're gonna head over to the motorhome though so we can finish up the monitor light circuit. So we're now over here at our motorhome and this is our monitor light. You'll have the monitor light that comes in your kit as well as a sticker here. You use a 5 16th drill bit to drill out the area on your motorhome where you want to mount your light. We mounted ours just to the left of the steering wheel kind of near uh, some of those controls over here. Double check behind any of your panels you want to put it on to make sure you got enough room. This is a pretty de uh, deep light. I'd say it's probably close to two inches in depth. So make sure you got that clearance behind it. There's two wires for this light. It's just a simple two wire circuit. One is power, one is ground. You'll also receive an audio board with your kit. And that's the purpose of the board is uh, if your brakes stay applied for too long, the board will give you an audible beep letting you know, hey, you might want to check your brakes. If you're not holding on your brake pedal and this is beeping, it's letting you know, hey, your brakes are applied in the back. Uh, so something's probably hung up. So we went ahead and just twisted the positive and negative circuits. It's also a two wire, just a red and a white power and ground for that as well. So we twist the reds together for the light and the soundboard. And we twist the whites together for the light and the soundboard. And we crimp, put a butt connector on each of those. The red wire then will attach to our monitor light wire that comes in our kit. You do get two of those monitor light wires. We put the shorter one on our vehicle and the longer one is for your motorhome here. They both have female uh, bullet terminals. On the motorhome here though, we wanna route that to the back of the motorhome. So from here, it's routed all the way back. The white circuit on the audio board and the monitor light here, both of those are gonna to go to ground. We used a little bit of the excess wire that was left over from running the monitor light to connect those to just a ground stud underneath the dash here. You have to find the ground on your motorhome. Sometimes it varies. I know there's a lot of wood and fiberglass on motorhomes, so you might have to route it to an engine compartment. It just varies so much from motorhome to motorhome on where you're gonna be putting your light. And you get a bunch of zip ties into your kit, so when routing your wire back, just make sure you zip tie it up. I always try to route my wire following factory wiring harnesses because we want to avoid anything excessively hot like our exhaust and any moving components like our steering and suspension components. And all of your factory wiring is already routed in a safe location that's going to avoid those things. So if you just zip tie to that, head and back, you're usually going to be safe with that there. And uh, you can see there's the female end right here. You'll also get a, another little monitor light harness. It has two male bullet connectors on it and that's because one will plug into here and the other one plugs into your vehicle. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System on our 2013 GMC Terrain.